In this video, we provide an introduction to the UVV spectroscopic technique. All right, in UVV spectroscopy, what we do is we shine uh, electromagnetic radiation or photons uh, of a wavelength in the UVV regime, and then what we do is we promote electronic excitations in a molecule or in a sample. Okay, so again, the key is that the type of transition that you're promoting with the photon uh, uh, that you're shining on that molecule will be uh, an electronic transition. Okay, so you're you're going to be promoting electrons from a low energy orbital to a high energy orbital. Okay, so in summary, essentially what we have is as follows. Uh, your molecule of interest is going to have a set of uh, orbitals uh, which are going to be uh, bonding and anti-bonding. Okay, and this can be sigma or pi, okay, but let's assume that the electronic occupation in the ground state is something like this. Okay, so these will be the bonding orbitals, and those will be the antibonding orbitals. That is your energy scale. And again, what you do in, in uh, uh, UV spectroscopy, you shine a photon, okay, H2, in which you take uh, one electron from a low energy state, perhaps this one, okay, and then uh, the result of that absorption of a photon would be uh, the promotion of that electron to an excited state. Okay, so now you would have something like this. Okay. All right. So uh, quantitatively, uh, the uh, spectroscopy can be treated much as we have done uh, infrared spectroscopy. Right. So the idea is that the energy of the photon H nu needs to be identical to the difference in energy between the final state and the initial state. Okay. So here we have a state, a state represented by uh, this occupation of orbitals. We have the final state represented by this occupation. Uh, of orbitals, and there's a difference between those two energies uh, that would allow us, in principle, to calculate what is the energy of the photon that you need to shine, or the wavelength of the photon that you need to shine, or any property of the photon, and then be able to predict the spectrum. But here's the problem. The problem is that uh, calculating in, a, in a, an easy way what the energies of molecular orbitals uh, are is actually something that is very difficult. You generally need to use computers for most molecules. There are a couple of examples in which we actually have learned how to calculate uh, uh, the energies of electronic states, but those are for very specific examples. Okay? One of them was uh, the electrons uh, in polyene molecules, okay, molecules that are like this, okay, because we said that the pi electrons uh, uh, on, in, this in this molecule can be well captured by the particle in a 1D box model. Okay, so in that case, we actually have that again for the pi electrons, we know what the energy of electronic states are, okay, and those energies are simply n, n squared, h squared, over 8 and l squared, where n is the quantum number, h is Planck's constant, m is the mass of the electron, and then l, uh, l is the length of the molecule. Okay, so for those type of uh, uh, molecules, polyenes, we can uh, predict quantitatively what the wavelength or the frequency of the photon that you need to shine on this molecule should be. Okay, and there's a different example in which we also have seen uh, quantitative, uh, quantitative equations for uh, the energies of electronic states. Okay, and that would be for, the, for hydrogenic atoms. Okay, so for hydrogenic atoms, what we actually learn, hydrogenic, is that the energy of a particular state is simply a constant, and then the, effective, the nuclear charge squared over uh, the principal quantum number squared. Okay, so with that equation, we, could, we were able to calculate the 1s, 2s, 2p, uh, the energies of those four orbitals in the case of the uh, hydrogenic atoms. And then we can do spectroscopy uh, uh, using these expressions quantitatively, right? We can uh, calculate what is the energy of the photon that you need to shine to promote an electron, say, from the 1s orbital to the 2p orbital. Okay, but aside from these hydrogenic atoms and the polyenes, uh, perhaps the particle and 2D box uh, systems, we also saw the equations for those. Again, uh, uh, for a you general know, molecule like CO, nitrogen, uh, or perhaps a protein, uh, uh, we don't have uh, easy energy expressions to be able to uh, quantitatively uh, carry out these predictions of where the photons, uh, what, what is the wavelength of the photons. And again, what that means that in the homework problems, we're only going to be dealing again with this type of problems. Okay? So uh, to summarize this, to summarize this uh, introductory uh, video on UV spectroscopy, uh, uh, the gist of UV spectroscopy is that we're shining photons in the UV regime, and we're promoting electronic excitations okay, from a low energy orbital to a high energy orbital. And generally, uh, uh, the transition that you're going to be observing is from the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital, to the LUMA, which would be the lowest uh, unoccupied molecular orbital. 